thing in your nightmare, that thing that's holding you back, that thing that's dragging you down, that thing is you. You will not outwork me. And the whole gig is just a giant hustle. That's all it is. Life is just a hustle. That's all life is. One giant hustle. Welcome back to the channel. So we are today, what we're going to try to do is I just dropped the coolant out of the radiator. As you can see, we're going to try to tackle this bottom radiator hose once again. Uh, I noticed things like beating a dead horse. We have tried to attempt to fix this radiator hose multiple times and have not succeeded for the dollar amount that I wanted so far. And we haven't really spent any money. The only thing that we're in this thing is uh, quite a few videos back where we purchased the actual Part store radiator hose, I think it was about $13, 16 bucks. We're down on that and we're down about a $20 fitting. Um, that's it. All the rest of the stuff is time, uh, on a budget, not trying to spend a lot. I've looked into the build your own kits for the lower radiator hose and to order that dash 20 line, um, it's looking to be about $200 is what you're going to spend online. And then you're going to have to order fittings if it don't come with fittings. A lot of $200 kits come with a couple fittings that you can get off Amazon or eBay or anything like that. Um, but I messed up. I had a Brown and Miller Racing ultra light line that I said in a couple videos back, uh, in case you missed it, on eBay. I think it was like 60 bucks. It was like 30, in the 30s on inches, 38 or something long. Um, don't, I wasn't sure if it was gonna work or not, uh, but I held out a little too long. When I went to finally purchase it, it was gone. Um, so even though we were extremely maxed out on the cards, on the budget for this uh, race car, and we really weren't trying to spend any money, I grabbed this line. And as you can see it laid on the floor, I'll show you here in a minute, but that thing is super long. So I snagged it off eBay the other night. I just have, I keep searching randomly. Uh, I'll just type in dash 20 AN, change your search results to use. And I just keep checking on it all the time throughout the week, a couple times a day. You know, whenever I think about it, basically, I'll check on on it. That line popped up. Uh, this is the longest Dash 20 I have ever seen uh, on eBay from a uh, race car takeoff. Uh, so when I seen this thing, I was pretty much like, we got to snag it. It ended up costing me $70 to my door uh, for that line, but I'm hoping we don't have to cut it up. My theory was this thing is six feet long. So uh, for about 200 bucks, you can get three feet of dash 20 line and make your own kit for 70 dollars i got six feet of line better quality line uh with crimp on ends so if i can loop this thing extremely big on the front of the car and leave the ends on it that'd be amazing the ends don't look 100 percent correct not sure if we're gonna be able to make them work or not but in my head it was spend the 70 to buy six feet of high quality line and then use our screw on fittings to screw onto this line versus the crappy line with the screw on fittings. I feel pretty confident with the screw on fittings on this line. Uh, I know a lot of people will say that you need to use the correct fitting for the correct line, but just like with the radiator hose, the clamp on style radiator hose, um, the screw on fittings are holding beautiful. There's no issues. There's zero issues with the radiator hose currently. The issue is that everybody is scared of it for safety. If the coolant system pressurizes and the radiator hose blows up, basically because the hose itself doesn't have the strength that one of these hoses will have, you know? So uh, we went and snagged it, 70 bucks, six feet of line. I'm hoping that we can just get this thing routed in there correctly. But if we can't, we're gonna cut it and we should come out ahead. This is what this thing looks like. It is, I mean, for this big line, it is super light. Um, it's like a cloth covering on it. It's in good shape overall crimped on fittings we've got this fitting on this end let's see here it does say xrp on the fitting so i'm guessing this is an xrp line um i can look back in my ebay account where i bought it but man this i mean this thing is this is a lot of line y'all so this was a freaking deal uh let's see here the band doesn't say anything on it but we're gonna lay this in there hopefully we can use it just like that that'd be amazing but these line these ends that one's got that weird bend to it and then this one has this one on it so this one's not that bad but that one on that end where it almost curves back into itself is definitely going to make things harder all right so we've got our thermostat housing out this is just the factory thermostat housing if you're new to the channel um or this is the first time seeing it that we literally just took and cut the um housing off the top of the housing we welded a dash 20 an bung onto it uh that way 
this can come off of the actual thermostat or the rest of the water pump and that stays in the vehicle so if you ever um, have to replace anything this piece you would keep uh, and you would swap over to your new one all i've been using on the bottom of this is gasket maker one minute gasket maker because from the factory your thermostat actually seals it up it has a rubber o-ring around it um, i thought about getting a thermostat cutting the guts out of it and putting it in there that would restrict a little bit of flow maybe i don't know maybe not maybe we should grab one when we're at the parts store here in a minute um we do gotta run up there and see if the diameter is the same or maybe i should grab one from shop probably a brand new one that way the o-ring is uh brand new and good because i'm tired of putting this uh, one minute gasket maker in there every time i gotta take this off uh, but what we're doing this is the piece we also made in the previous video uh this is actually a fitting right here like a universal fitting that you would get a thread on one that you put on the lines we cut it and again uh had mike weld on a um, dash 20 bung this gave us our 45 off of here that we needed for the old lines now this new line right here um, it pretty much i think that's going to be the same let's see here this end down here is going to pretty much be the same as you can see the two bins so i think this it's kind of pretty close it's not exact same angle, but it's going to work. So this will allow us, this line will allow us to eliminate uh, this point. So you had an extra failure point. Not only bolt, screwing on here is a failure point, but then when you attach this line to here, this is another failure point. And there's a lot of stuff, two fittings that can move around and come loose <coughs> versus just one. I did test fit this in the car a second ago, and it is really extremely long. Both of these ends do work beautifully, surprisingly. That end actually works amazing. I never felt like that would work. I figured this would be the one. Um, the one thing I did not realize is this is not a swivel. So this hose uh, does not have swivel ends on it. I didn't really pay attention to that when I bought it. I was more excited about the length, you know, per foot, what I was paying per foot versus the ends on it. But it will connect together. It's just a matter of do i like the way it looks all right so with it in the car you see it comes down perfectly straight like we want so that angle definitely works you can hold this up there to the steering rack so you'd be able to get zip ties in that and when you hold that up that does not really kink that up now if you were worried about the kink you could slide it over that way but you kind of want to eat some of the length of the hose up right here so you can kink that one up that one will touch that frame rail over there you can zip tie that and this one will clearly route around to this frame rail so you could zip tie it to that comes Problem. into play right here whenever this thing routes back you can see our hook is on the wrong side so if our hook was 180 facing this way we would be freaking perfect because our fitting is right there but clearly uh that's not gonna work so this is where the swivel would roll uh come into excellent effect now if you just may, if you just physically turn this in fitting and then obviously it wants to twist the whole entire hose meaning you gotta route it you know another direction so uh that's what i'm messing with now but boy we would have been freaking gold if this was a swivel fitting um, a 90 would be perfect here i do have 90s so i can cut this hose put a 90 on the end of it but you know that's going to be a last resort because if i can keep the crimped on fittings obviously they're better than screw on fittings so um, that's what we are figuring out right now is if there's another way to route this thing <laughs> I'm about to cut it. I'm gonna cut it, y'all. I'm gonna cut it. I'm nervous. <laughs> the part of the matter is we know this is a very expensive line. I bought it for $70 used. So I don't even wanna know what it costs new. Um, I have been working on it for an hour trying to figure out how to route this thing successfully without it looking a stupid and without it just being all into everything and with it safely being routed as far away from the belts as we can get it. If I could put the fittings on the same side, the inlet and outlet on the radiators on the same size, we'd also be golden because we could come from this side of the motor, drop straight down, go over here and in the radiator. But unfortunately, with this style traditional radiator, the, your inlet and your outlets have to be on opposite sides because if you're new to cars and you don't know, uh, the water comes in one side, goes through all of the cooling part of the radiator and comes out the other side. There is a, a certain type of radiator, starts with the S. I cannot pronounce that word, so I'm not gonna make a fool of myself. That is designed where basically one comes in the top, loops around, goes down one side of the radiator, and it goes back through the cooling and comes out the same side. Uh, but you have to get that certain type of radiator, and mine is not, and we're certainly not about to not buy a new radiator. So we're gonna cut it.
We're just gonna do it. All right, we did it. Y'all see them sparks? And we're gonna rinse this out real fast with the water hose. It sucks because the weather, this is what the weather's like here. Yesterday we were sweating and it was 80 degrees and today it is really cold and rainy. So we cut it. So we got this little thing now that we'll save for something. I'm not sure if we ever need it, but yeah, we did it, y'all. We did it. Let's hope this works. Let's uh, flush this thing out with the water hose, and let's get our screw-in fitting on the end of there. All right, so we got it done. The difficult level, difficulty level of getting this, you can see it took some Vaseline. Um, I'm out of breath. It's extremely high. I didn't care about the fitting, tearing it up, nothing like that. I used a pipe wrench to put mine on. Um, yeah, extremely high difficulty level to cut one of these lines and put it on that. The thing with these lines, the reason why they kink, I'm learning, is this is a hard plastic. This is actually not a rubber like your normal radiator hose. This is a normal radiator hose that we had on there. This is a hard plastic. So the plastic is, um, it's got give to it a little bit, but it's hard. So it doesn't, that's the reason why when you fold it, it just kinks. Once it kinks, then it kind of wants to remember that and keep kinking in that same spot. It doesn't want to, like a radiator hose, you can kink it and then it'll just pop right out. This, once you kink it, it remembers it, it weakens the circle, and then it wants to keep kinking in that one spot. I can't pull this out. So I've already tried to, but this is a device, physically pull it out and make sure it's in there. That thing is pinched in there. It sandwiches the hose between the outer coupling and the inner coupling. It sandwiches in, tighter screwage in, it just keeps squishing it and squishing it in. So it is in there, I can't pull it apart. Um, I don't see the reason why it would mess up or anything just because these are pretty basic how they work, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Let's get into the Last time we deleted the thermostat on this car. Obviously this car has no thermostat. And so um, I've been putting the housing in with a one minute gasket maker, just our, our TV, putting it in. But now that I have took this thing out twice, um, it's messy. So what we've done is we took the factory thermostat out of one of our, our parts coyote at the shop and I cut every bit of the thermostat off. Uh, so took the inside out, cut it all off, cut it flat as a washer, everything. So that's gonna keep us the factory thickness of a thermostat being in there. Then we took the O-ring. These take a little O-ring on them. They just go in there. They basically go in there honestly like that. They literally go up in there. So this is allow us to put the factory thermostat back in with the O-ring without putting the thermostat back in. Meaning we can put this factory water pump housing back together as it was put together from Ford, just with the thermostat deleted. And we should have no problems. We shouldn't have to use gasket maker. Everything should still up, seal up correctly and we should be good to go. So we are trying to chase the discover card back down, okay? So all of this stuff, plays a role in where this car is at and what the future looks like for the next couple weeks with this car. Randy's car needs attention. Discover card's maxed out. American Express has paid off. This car needs an oil change. That's 150 freaking dollars or something. Uh, we still have no engine diaper. That's anywhere from 200 to 400, depending on which one I go with. Radiator hose is fixed now, which I put that on the card to max it. That contributed in maxing it out because I got such a good deal on that hose. Hopefully the radiator hose is fixed now. All right, I think we might've finally got it. Um, this line right here gets a little close to that, not touching it. So if we slide it back this way, we can open it way up. So we're gonna have to permanently mount this line. I've got it just zip tied right here. Uh, we're going to get this up. I'm going to get on the internet uh, here in a few and look for a P-clamp this size, inch and a half. Uh, something that we can bolt to this to lock this hose in from sliding left to right. Because that's what we need to do is lock it in so that it don't get into that uh, tensioner. Uh, this hose has just been a pain in the butt. So it'd be nice to roll this a little bit more. But in order to get that loose, you got to take the thermostat housing bolts out that we just put in. And you got to uh, clock that on the bench before you put it in here because the pro charger bracket's right here so it's impossible to get a wrench on that um 
Yep, that's what sucks about this little radiator hose. That's why this thing has been beating my teeth in. Um, but once we get something to lock this in right here, then it won't be that bad. But you can see slight kink right there. The more we go that way, the more it kinks. The more we go this way, the happier it is. So right there, I can barely get a pinky in. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's in there. So got to figure that out. I'll get on the internet. She loops around. No, it doesn't hit the tire. That's a little turn. It's nowhere near the tire. It's just zip tied up to the bar. And then she 90 degrees into the radiator. It's not leaking right now. We'll see what it does whenever it gets up to heat. And it's actually got some drive on it. But um, that might be our fix for now. I really don't know what else to do, y'all. Um, me not being, if I could MIG weld, I would have probably already done some crazy MIG weld. If I could TIG weld, I probably would have already done some crazy crap right here. But I get tired of inconveniencing other people. Um, and, you know, like I said in the past, if you're new, the issue was that point A to point B is too close together to get anything uh, get anything on it and be able to screw the fittings in. We went over all that in the past. Um, so this is just, yeah, this is just what it's going to be, man. It's going to be for now. It's not that bad. <laughs> I'm wondering if having all this freaking extra radiator hose in the lower one is going to help cool it or if it's going to hurt something or make it worse. Um, I honestly hate the way it looks, but I'm beyond burnt out on this freaking lower radiator hose issue. So maybe we can get this car caught up and uh, in the future we can revisit it again. I need to learn how to freaking take weld aluminum. That's for sure. Um, it just sucks. It just flat out sucks the way it is. It just sucks. Having to, having the mounts on the same side just absolutely freaking sucks. And then going with that big of a hose. If I could go back, I probably would have stepped everything down to dash 16. Um, and if we ever change this radiator out, we will probably uh, switch to dash 16 bungs instead of dash 20. Because I think we could have got by on dash 16. So that's going to be a wrap on this one. We still got odds and ends to do. So we're not done on the car by any means. Um, but we ain't going to be spending no money on the car. I'm going to bed. <laughs>